Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And again this week, we're at Manhattan Reptile World and we're hanging out with Colin from Classy Herps. One thing I didn't tell you about Colin last week is this guy is like the Roach King, which is a title that I personally could never hold, but he has it. So what have you got for us today, Colin? So we got a lot of Dubia Roaches and I'm just gonna kinda showcase one of our uh, individual colonies and kinda give you guys an overview on the life cycle of roaches and kinda give you guys some information about them. So um, these things, uh, the reason that we breed them is they are un undeniably the best food source for a lizard or anything that eats insects for that matter. Uh, they're, they have about 30% protein which is uh, unbeatable by any other feeder insect. Um, and obviously the size range, you can feed them anything from like a newborn leopard gecko to an adult bearded dragon. So uh, it's a, just a huge variety and uh, they're really, really good as a food source. And so um, these, these big ones right here are the females. And as they come in different sizes, see they, they're shiny and they don't have wings like that. And it, they give birth to these tiny, tiny little roaches. Can pick one up like that if you can see that guy crawling on my hand and females roaches actually have this really weird thing where they don't give live birth and neither do they lay eggs what actually happens is they produce an egg sac that will come out of the back of the female and then the female the babies will actually crawl out of the egg sac and crawl right back into her on the back end and then they'll incubate in a special brood pouch that she has inside of her for about another month and then the babies will seemingly just crawl out of her, seeming like they give live birth, but it's really kind of like kangaroos, like nursing their babies for a while. And uh, so when they come out, they're about that size. And then as they grow, they have to molt their skin like all insects do. And so you can see, here's a little bit bigger one here. And this is what they look like when they molt. They're solid white like that. And that's not an albino roach, it's just that their exoskeleton is really soft and it'll take about a day for the pigment to come in. And then they'll turn like normal color. And so you can see they grow up a little bit bigger. And they go through about seven molts until they hit maturity. And it's really, really hard to tell the difference between a male and a female roach as a nymph, which are these immature, kind of dull brown ones. But once they hit that seventh one, they mature into either a male or a female. And as you can see, the, the females don't have wings, the males do. There's an obvious difference. Um, so, yeah, and then the females will actually keep growing a little bit. You can see this is kind of a smaller one, and that's kind of a bigger one. And as they grow, they'll actually give birth to more babies. And they have babies about once a month, and they'll have about 20 to 30 at a time. That is, like, completely creepy. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and, like, I don't know if you saw the big box in front of her feet here. How many roaches did you estimate are in this box? I had a guess. Thousands, thousands. I don't even think you could estimate, honestly. So you get the, the, the thing about roaches is they really like to hide, so they're always going to be at the bottom, especially when they're exposed to light. They really don't like being out in the open. It's because they have no natural defenses except for their ability to hide. And so this is what a dubia roach colony looks like. And as you can see, there's babies um, and adults in here of all different ages. And the cool thing about roaches uh, is the females can live for two years and uh, it takes six months from when they're born to grow up to maturity to when they can start producing. So that means about a year and a half they're having babies every month. So they live for a long time compared to crickets which go through their whole life cycle in about a month. That's really cool, but what about these things get out in your house? The really cool thing about these guys is uh, they come from a tropical area down in South America, so they have to stay warm. Ideally, they, they do best at about 90, and so if they get out in your house and it's like 70, they're not going to last for very long because they're exothermic, they'll freeze to death in about a week, and the worst that's going to happen is you'll find a dead roach on its back. So they're not going to like infest your walls and make your nope. neighbor, the restaurant owner, mad? Nope. Uh, the really cool thing about them, too, is they can't even really do anything. All they eat is uh, fallen fruit that uh, would have fallen to the forest floor naturally. So we feed ours apples and carrots and things like that. So they're never going to like chew into your house or anything. I tell you, Colin, there's a lot of things I'm into, but these have never been one. Yeah. You think it's about time to hold one then? Oh. Put one of these big females on you and give it a try. You guys don't realize that this like literally makes me cringe. 
But I'm gonna do it because you know sometimes you gotta put your big boy pants on. Oh my god, that's there just you weird. Go. <laughs> There's not a lot of things I have like a true, you know, that roaches are one of them. It is not as bad as I thought having that set on me, <laughs> but they are just. Uh, I have never been a huge bug fan. Uh, spiders aren't so bad. I've gotten used to them, but roaches are just one of those things that just literally give me the willies. But he's actually, or oh, this is a she, right? Yeah, no that's wings. an adult female. Say I learned something. It's actually pretty chill. Yeah, the females are really calm and they're really thick-bodied like that. The males here are a different story. They have these wings, but they they cannot fly. Their wings are purely for like a display purpose to for breeding. Um, they're a lot more spastic. Like when I'm let go of him, he's probably gonna run off my hand. They're the males are a lot flightier. Okay, she's like walking, but yeah. it's not. You know my. Yeah. My heart is starting to slow down. This isn't horrible. I'll play with rattlesnakes. I'll yeah. play with huge pythons. You know, I've even played with the cobra. But the, but this... <laughs> a dubia roach. <laughs> a dubia roach? About brings me to my knees. But yeah. very cool. I'll let you have her back. All right. Oh. The, the cool thing about these guys, too, is how harmless they are in the way that crickets can actually bite you. And I'm sure that everybody's kind of experienced that who's been around them long enough. But these guys literally can't even bite you. Um, and so... Uh, the worst that they can do is crawl on you like that, and that's uh, it's it's a needed thing, and they are a great food source. Colin, thanks so much for sharing roaches with us. Kurt, do you have any questions? Um, about how much do these cost? Like, if you're going to get them to feed your your pets, uh, they go up in price as you get um, as they go in size. So we sell them here in these individual cups for ten dollars a piece. But if you wanted to get some adults to start a breeding colony of your own, um, a lot of the times the adult females will sell for a dollar a piece, uh, cheapest pretty much anywhere. They're in a huge demand because they're fairly new to the reptile scene. It seems like everybody wants them but nobody has them. And so uh, we're producing them here so you can come and buy them at Manhattan Reptile World. Absolutely. Now when it comes to breeding these, you mentioned they're a great food source. Have you noticed a difference since you've used these with your bearded dragons? Colin also breeds some bearded dragons as far as healthy eggs, number of eggs, and the female oh, yeah. getting back to yeah. size. It can make a huge difference in your animals because the females are able to eat a lot less and they, they, ha they don't have to process as much food and so they're not going to poop as much either. Um, as well. Crickets have a lot of exoskeleton, like the ratio of exoskeleton to the good stuff on the inside is a lot better in dubia roaches so they're going to poop less and they're going to put on more fat for those eggs and they're just going to be able to develop faster because they have a better nutrient source. There you go guys, it's a healthier bearded dragon with a less poop that can make a guy that's creeped out by roaches even like him because nobody likes cleaning up poop. Uh, again, today is Cinco de Mayo and our live streaming show over at the Reptile Guys starts today. So make sure to come check it out, get to know Scaly Dave, the coach, myself, Colin, and camera guy Kurt who you've already met. Uh, so pop on over 8 p.m. Central Time. We're going to be there. We hope you are too. Colin, thanks again. Any more questions, Kurt? Nope. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.